Get everything you need for your holiday meal at Whole Foods Market. Right now, you'll find Animal Welfare Certified Rib Roast on sale. It's a deliciously crowd-pleasing centerpiece. Plus, save on spiral sliced ham, bone-in lamb, and seasonal produce like sweet potatoes and honey crisp apples. For ready-to-eat sides, head to the prepared food section. Done. And remember that Whole Foods Market caters. Order gourmet catering at shop.wfm.com. Bring the holiday magic with Whole Foods Market. Saturday, Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. This is fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. Hello and welcome to The Paddock and the Pavilion with Stephen Wallace. In each show, Stephen will interview someone connected to the world of horse racing or cricket. Hello everyone, the Women's 100 competition is now in full flow and my guest today is Bryony Smith, a Trent Rocket and an England off-spinning all-rounder. Hello Bryony. Hello, thanks for having me. We're recording this on Thursday the 18th of August, less than 24 hours after the Trent Rocket's Five wicket defeat against the Oval Invincibles last night at Trent Bridge. Uh, but it was a bit tight at the end there. You were bowling the last, well, you didn't bowl all the last 10 balls, but at one point I thought you might do. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a bit of a weird, weird ending, really. Um, you know, they needed five off the last 10, and Matt apologised and gave me the ball, um, <laughs> which is always, you know, it's always tough to bowl that last sort of set when you know that. It's, you know, no one really expects you to, to win the game from that position. But um, no, it was great that we could we could take it really deep and take it to the last. And get, they needed two off two, I think, in the end. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty exciting finish to a low scoring thriller. Yeah, as a spectator, you were sitting there thinking, "Well, the Trent Rockets can't win this game, can they?" But uh, <laughs> what do you what do you think to bowling at the death? Is not is that somewhere where you don't normally bowl? Or um, I've done bits of it, um, you know, back at the South East Stars. It's something that I did quite a lot in the T Twenty campaign, so it's something that I am used to, but haven't haven't done it in a while really. Um, but it was nice to to contribute with the ball. Um, as it didn't quite come off with the bat as well. But last night with the ball in those last is it eight balls, were you in the end thinking that there was a chance, although you got Marazan Cap to bowl to with, with two balls to go? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it helps that I know a lot of the oval side very well, because um, obviously it's the majority of the players there I play with at the South East Stars. Um, so I knew sort of their plans, but yeah, as I said, Five from ten, no one's really thinking that you can pull it off. Um, so it was nice to to add a bit of excitement, really, at the end of the game to what was, you know, they were cruising for the majority. Um, so, yeah, it's, it was unfortunate that Cappy was on strike for that last two balls. But, um, you know, we had quite a clear plan. We, I was very calm and it, it just didn't come off. Well, you got three for 21 and we also had Alana King bowling 10 <laughs> dot balls in a row that must be a first and probably never happen again I think yeah it must be the first um I couldn't quite believe what was going on really um you know that first five I think there's been a couple of five dots but um certainly when it got up to sort of seven and eight and I was like oh this is definitely um the first I've seen of 10 dots in a row not only in the 100 but in a T20 comp as well so um, no it's great that we have Kingy here um, she just adds that, a bit of class to our bowling attack and you know having two world class leggies in our team is something that uh, we don't take for granted and you've seen by the wickets they've taken that uh, it definitely benefits us Now you've moved from the Welsh Fire to the Trent Rockets um, what's it been like settling in at a new team? Um, I've really enjoyed it, actually. Um, obviously, came in a couple of days later than the rest of the squad due to the Commonwealth Games. But, um, no, it's a bit easier, I think, in the women's game that 
you've played against all these people for years um, and then you're suddenly on a team with them. Um, and it helps that there are quite a few familiar faces around with within the England team. Um, so, yeah, I think I've settled in really well um, and I'm enjoying it so far. You'd not miss those short straight boundaries at Cardiff then? No. <laughs> No, that was one of the things that I said I'd miss. Where <laughs> to the, uh, we played Welsh Fire in a warm-up game the other week and that is something that I did mention. And as, have you noticed any differences in the 100-2022 to 100-2021? Um, not massively, really. I think players are starting to figure out different ways to go about it. Um, you know, you've seen this year in the women's competition, on average... Scores have been higher than last year, um, whether that's shorter boundaries or players, um, you know, judging their innings a bit better. I think we figured out that we all have a little bit more time than we thought than last year. You know, you go in, you think, right, 100 balls, I've got to get going from ball one. Um, but I think players have figured out that if you are sort of five of 10, that's OK. You've, you've still got plenty of time. Um and yeah, better pitches. It helps that the outfields are so dry, so the ball runs on. Um, as soon as you get it past the ring, it's four. But um, no, I think the crowds have sort of been on par to last year, if not better. And the engagement we've had with fans and sort of everyone else just walking around Nottingham, you know, if we're in kit, just the engagement of people saying good luck, go well sort of thing is is fantastic. And as a... As an all-rounder, opening batsman, off-spinner, how do you approach your two disciplines when you're playing in the 100? My main focus is probably still on my batting, to be honest. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, opening the batting, that's a very clear role for me um, to go out and, and strike the ball hard. And unfortunately, I keep finding fielders at the moment, but um, you know, it's a very sort of simple plan that I have and hopefully it will come off. But with the bowling side, again, I'm just trying to keep it simple. I'm not necessarily a massive turner of the ball. I'm just there to to bowl wicket to wicket, really, and put pressure on on the batters so they have to change something. And do you as a batsman and a, and a bowler get lots of data, information about who you're bowling to, who's bowling to you and that sort of thing? Yeah, we always have uh, like meetings before the game. We have a bowlers and a batters meeting, um, so I have to sit in both, unfortunately. But um, no, it, it helps that we all know each other very well um, across the teams and we've played against and with each other for years and years. So that does make it a bit simpler. It's mainly sort of the overseas players that um, we really have to have to look at or like some of the younger girls who are a bit more unheard of. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of information around, but it's just picking out bits that you need and not sort of getting overhauled with every single batter and every single bowler because you, you can't cope with that, really. Yeah, I guess if not, you'd be frightened to let go of the ball or even, you know, strike yeah. a ball again because you know so much detail about every person. You've got to still, a lot of instinct must come into it, how you play the game. Yeah, definitely. It's something you know, I'm... I don't like having too much information when I go up to bat. I like to keep it very simple. You know, if the ball's in my area, if it's first ball, fifth ball, I'm going to hit it. Um, sort of, I don't really think about that situation of, oh, I might get out if I do this. It's very much a positive mindset of, I know I've got the power behind the ball to to clear the ropes and um, hopefully, it, hopefully it happens soon. Um, you know, I'm striking the ball well, I just keep hitting it to fielders. It's one of those games really, isn't it, the 100? You've got to go for it from the start and, you know, one day they can go past the field or another day they can make this fantastic catch, <laughs> can't they? Exactly. It's a, it's a frustrating game, cricket, isn't it? Um, you know, growing up, it's always been very much, you know, it's such a tough game mentally because, as you said, one day it's all going your way and then the next day someone could take an absolute specky off one of the best shots you've ever played. So um, it's very much for me parking what's happened and um, taking the positives from each game and, and going forward to the next because it's such a quick competition that there's no time to dwell on on what's happened really. And we know that um, our top order will fire because we've got that power in there. And what do you think, talking about the competition of the impact of 
the hundred on the women's game and women's sport? I think it's been massive for the women's game. Um, yeah, not just cricket, but women's sport in general. I think we've seen, especially last year, you know, none of us really knew what to expect. Um, brand new competition, brand new sort of fan base. But um, no, I think you you can just see with the crowds that we've had, um, you know, thinking back to last year, that first standalone women's game at the Oval, um, the amount of people there was fantastic. And um, I just think that sort of just getting the women's game out there a little bit more and having sort of big women's players like Catherine Brunt, Nat Siver, sort of as household names now, um, is fantastic. And I'm sure that um, other sports will, will follow. You, you've seen the success of the women's football team. Um, so sort of making sure that that legacy isn't lost and we carry on uh, moving forward and um, don't take any steps back really and, and keep pushing the women's game forward. I know you're very young yourself, but do you see yourself as a role model with, with when you've got 17-year-olds and, and the teenagers watching the television at the same time? Yeah, I think that's something that comes with the job, really. Um, you know, it's something that I always pride myself on is making sure that after games I'll go and chat to the, chat to the fans or sign a few things. Because, um, you know, growing up, I didn't have that really. There were, I didn't really know any of the women's players, to be honest, um, growing up. And so for me, it's how can I make a difference chatting to someone or um, going and visiting a local club or going into a school and doing like an assembly or something. You know, how can I, uh, how can I promote the women's game um, in a positive way and sort of what impact I can have? Because, you know, a little thing like going into a club and seeing you know, I grew up and I was the only girl in the club, only girl in the league. And how can I help that sort of to progress? Um, so going into clubs and seeing sort of like eight, nine, ten girls um, is something that I I take um, pride in. And um, yeah, hopefully I can carry that on. That correct. Uh... Time you timed that right, so we're going to move on to your own sort of how you started in cricket. It must have been very different um, as a young girl. So how how did you start? Is it family? Yeah, so I've got an older brother, um, and my dad also plays. So I go and sort of watch my dad growing up, um, and then my older brother would join would be playing as well. So I wasn't very good at sitting still, um, so I'd be up playing, sort of throwing a ball, hitting the ball. Um, I grew up playing quite a few sports as well, so um, I was mainly a sort of juggling squash and cricket for a long time. Um, two very different sort of concepts, but um, yeah, so I joined, so I was based at Wallington Cricket Club down in Surrey, only go in the league, only go in the club, sort of grew up playing with the boys through from like seven or eight through to 18 really um and then was asked to to join the Surrey girls set up when I was nine um so played all the age groups and then obviously progressing into the first team at senior cricket and then was asked to um, join the England women's like developments um camps at 15 um, so that's when I first met Sal Beams who's now our Trent Rockets coach um and then progressed through there. So did the under 15s, did the under 19s, and then made it into the England Academy when I was, I think I was 18. Um, and then yeah, things sort of blew up from there. So then, I'll became, just take you back though. Just take you back yeah. to you, you've you've you know sped through parts of your career <laughs> that um, I wanted to talk about. You you made your Surrey debut. You're only 16 when you're making <laughs> your Surrey debut. You must have still been at school. Yeah, I was 16, probably just juggling my GCSEs, probably. Yeah, that was a bit of a whirlwind few weeks, really. I didn't really expect it. Um, that was sort of back when most of the international girls still played county level. Um, so I think... Yeah, your we, debut, you're playing with Nat Siver um, when you're 16. Yeah. He's a little bit older than you, but it still must have been <laughs> quite quite nerve-wracking going into that dressing room. Yeah, it helps that... 
I'd been training with them for a while, so I did know most of them. Um, I think Nat had just come off from an international tour or something, so it was a bit like, oh, that's Nat Siva, you know, don't miss field off her bowling sort of thing. Um, but no, I love doing county stuff. And, you know, Surrey have helped me so much over the years that I look to give back wherever I can, really, and playing the odd game now um, when I'm allowed. Um, but, yeah, but making that first senior debut was was a special day and something that I probably won't forget for a, for a long time. I noticed that in your second game, you got 60 against Yorkshire, so you made a good start. And then by 2018, you're part of the Surrey Stars team that win the KSL Super League. Yeah. Um, again, you look back and it, it seems like so long ago, but um, it wasn't really. Um, you know, the Super League started in probably 2016, was it? First year? Yeah, 16, um, yeah. Yeah, so I just turned 18 when I first started. Um, you know, I have memories of being that real sort of fresh, but no one really knew who I was. Um, opening the batting with, I think it was Tammy back then, um, playing at the Oval and big grounds like that. And I think I hit Catherine Brunt for four fours in an over. And that sort of put me out there a little bit of, you know, I knew that, I always knew that I could do it, but actually doing it, at that level against that sort of bowler um, and at the Oval as well, my home ground was, I think that sort of kick-started my real passion um, and sort of made me think, okay, I could do this for a living. This is something that I want to do. Get everything you need for your holiday meal at Whole Foods Market. Right now, you'll find Animal Welfare Certified Rib Roast on sale. It's a deliciously crowd-pleasing centerpiece. Plus, save on spiral sliced ham, bone-in lamb, and seasonal produce like sweet potatoes and honey crisp apples. For ready-to-eat sides, head to the prepared food section. Done. And remember that Whole Foods Market caters. Order gourmet catering at shop.wfm.com. Bring the holiday magic with Whole Foods Market. And then in 2018, you also went on an England tour of India where you played against India and Australia. And you made your England T20 debut against the Australians, who lining up against Healy, Mooney, Perry, um, Rachel Haynes. What was that like in India as well? <laughs> yeah, a bit of a whirlwind, really. I don't remember much of it because it was such, like, it was such a weird day because I didn't quite know what to do with myself. Um, yeah, against the Aussies, we won as well against the Aussies, which is always special. Um, but I remember walking out to bat, uh, opening the batting and sort of taking my guard and Alyssa Healy was behind the stumps and at least Perry was at like extra cover or something. And I was a bit like, well, this is, you know, this is for real. This is what um, I've always wanted to do and I'm getting that opportunity to do to do it and yeah that was a fantastic time really I was still working full-time back then um so I had four weeks off work which didn't go down very well but um you know. this was teaching wasn't it yeah so I was uh, an assistant uh, at a secondary school in the PE department so helping out with all the sports and, and heading up the cricket as well so they were very good for me um, allowed me to have time off when I needed so very good what was it like playing in India? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I've been lucky enough to go there a couple of times now and every time I go, it, it still amazes me of how cricket mad they are. Um, you know, just walking down the street and you've got people running up to you if you're in a bit of kit and running up to you and asking for photos and sort of saying, you know, I love cricket, can I have your back? Can I have this? Can I have that? And it's just... It's mad. Um, it's really hard to explain because, like you say, everyone loves cricket and people are like, oh, no, they don't. But they will genuinely <laughs> love the game and, um, yeah, just have a massive interest. And the crowds there, obviously very biased to India, um, but just standing in the field and hearing the noise was was amazing. Well, you made your ODI debut against the West Indies in 2019 and then we had the the COVID year of 2020 <laughs> when it must have been difficult playing cricket, but at least the Rachel Hayho Flint trophy began that year, didn't it? Yeah, that was a really tough time. I think 
um, for me and everyone. We were had biosecure bubbles um, in in the summer, and which meant we miss we miss quite a lot of the Rachel Hayho Flint. I think I played two games that summer, um, so it was yeah, it was really tough. We were stuck in Derby for a few, few weeks in one bubble. Then we had a Loughborough bubble as well. And, you know, you've seen, um, especially in the men's game, sort of what, what they thought of the bubbles. Um, yeah, it's a really tough environment, really. We were all glad we could play some cricket, um, but sort of not being able to leave your hotel room, not being able to to do what you normally do on tour, you know, go out for coffee, go out for dinner, um, was really tough. And to be in a hotel room where you can see the cricket pitch <laughs> is also tough because it, it's very hard to switch off and that's something that we all like to do you know you if you're thinking about cricket 24 7 that's when you overthink things and you get mentally fatigued um so yeah it's a tough tough year but we're all glad that most of the restrictions are gone now and we can sort of start to really enjoy cricket again yeah, I think we forget that. Sometimes I think the people who were not playing professional sport had and did have actually more freedom than the likes of what you did because we could, to an extent, do what we wanted, whereas you were very much doing the one thing, weren't you? Yeah, it was just cricket. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah and as much as we, we love playing cricket, we also like to do other stuff um but we weren't able to, you know, no one was allowed in the hotels. No one was allowed out the hotel. Um, you know, once on the pitch as well, there were all the restrictions. And you can't celebrate. You can't do this. You can't do that. And they're the sort of little bits that you normally take for granted. Of, but actually, they that team cohesion sort of side of it is something that we all enjoy. And, um, yeah, we weren't able to do that. And I know a lot, a lot of the girls really struggled with it. In our next podcast, episode 147, I was joined by Stephanie Jardabak, the Swedish mother of two who won her first race for 20 years when riding Billy Roberts at Haydock Park in early August. In this short clip, Stephanie talks about the finish to the race and the joy of victory. I felt I had so much horse underneath me. I thought this, this might work out, actually. So I just crept up. Um, passed a few horses and I thought I might win this actually and then when I passed all the other horses and it, 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 there was just silence I was like what's going on is there no one else behind me you know I couldn't hear anyone but then obviously Emily came up next to me she was gaining again and but I, I could see the finish line and I, I wasn't really worried but it was just yeah I couldn't couldn't believe it uh, first over the line, amazing. Well, the summer 2021 was much better for you personally. The South East Stars won the Charlotte Edwards Cup. You were the leading bowler in the competition. You also had a successful uh, time in the Rachel Hayhoe Flint Trophy. And you were, at the end of the year, you got selected for the England A Tour of Australia. That must yeah. have been good to be back in the England, sort of close to the England setup. Yeah, definitely. Um, I always had that sort of in the back of my mind that that Australia tour. Um, ever since I found out about it, sort of before that summer, um, so I knew that if I put in strong performances in both formats, then I'd have a real a real good chance. Um, unfortunately, it did happen. Um, so yeah, it was. I love playing for the South East Stars. Um, you know, to have that sort of Surrey connection is something that um really sort of sold it to me to to join the stars and um yeah to to captain that team as well to the Charlotte Edwards Cup for the first time um was a really special day and something that we all still talk about occasionally of you know how sort of big an achievement it was because I think you know when you're in the middle of the season it can all be a bit of a blur but actually looking back um because it was trying to think last year it was split last year so we did half then we had the 100 then we finished it up um so I think the way we came back together after the 100 with people being everywhere around the country um really shows the environment we have and 
yeah, um, fortunately for me and a few of the other Stars girls, we, we got on that plane to Oz. Um, again, with, with COVID restrictions, um, you know, Christmas was pretty much cancelled for us. So we, we had to be really careful because we had weekly testing just to get on the plane. Um, so, yeah, for <laughs> another tough time. But, um, you know, I found out I had COVID Christmas Eve, so that was my Christmas gone. Um, but fortunately, we all got on the plane safely and it was a really enjoyable trip. And then moving on to 2022, you must be pleased with how it's gone. You've been selected for the Commonwealth Games. You've, you've played well personally in the Charlotte Edwards Cup. You got to the semi-finals this year. You yeah. made runs in the Rachel Hayhoe Flint Trophy and you were selected for England in two T20s. Yeah. Um, again, didn't really expect it, um, but it's weird. I actually had an appraisal last winter and I said to our director and our head coach, um, they asked me what my dream goal was for this That's summer. It's like being back at work, this is. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, we forget that you're at yeah. work, but it's like me being back in the bank here, you know, an appraisal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they asked me my dream goal for the summer and I said I want to be in that Commonwealth Games squad um, sort of I didn't really know if I could do it but I said that's my goal if I don't get there I'm going to give it my best shot um, so I knew that if I had a decent Charlotte Edwards Cup then I'd have a really good chance with that and ball and yeah um, got that phone call from Heather a few weeks before we met up um, for the T20s against South Africa and yeah, it was a really, it was really strange actually, just because I was a bit overwhelmed. I didn't really, really know what to do. I remember just running downstairs and like shouting at my mum. I was like, I'm going to the Commonwealth Games. And we both just burst into tears because I didn't really know what to do. Um, but no, it's been a really enjoyable summer so far. And just to ex- be able to experience the Commonwealth Games and a multi sport event is something that. Yeah, I'm, I'll never forget, and um, well, hopefully, get another go at it in four years. But um, you know, if that's the only time I get to go, it's something that I'm not going to forget, and memories I will cherish. Yeah, I'd written down here. You, you've got a chance of being part of the of hopefully the next Commonwealth Games if they have cricket in. But were you disappointed not playing one of the games? Yeah, it's it was a really, I really enjoyed the experience, but I was also very frustrated. Um, you know, for me, I mean, yeah, I really everyone wants to play, don't they? It was, yeah, I really wanted to play, and you know, having to sit on the bench and not being able to contribute um, is something that I really struggled with. But you know, I sort of kept having to take a a step back in game. You still got into the fifteen. That's still a massive achievement. Um, If I can't help on the pitch, what can I do off the pitch? to help the team and sort of have that team first mentality of, you know, how can I help someone perform when I'm on the bench? Um, which is a, I think it's a really tough sort of place to be because you obviously see what you want to be on the pitch. You want to help, um, you want to score around, you want to take wickets, but um, you know, that that's part of the job really that you are going to have to, to sit on the sidelines sometimes, but um, yeah, just, just to be there was fantastic. And, Hopefully, if I do get to go next time, I can, I can be on the pitch and and scoring some runs. And the team, was the third, fourth place game whilst they were still playing a medal a little bit of an anti-climax because the team had hoped, very much hoped to get to the final? Yeah, uh, it was a really tough weekend. We you know that game against India going down to the wire. Uh, it hit us all very hard. Um, you know, I, I can't quite remember what the scores were, but for it to, for us to not chase the score down and getting so close, yeah, everyone was very disappointed, and to have to pick ourselves up and go again, sort of early the next morning, was was tough. But I think, you know, we everyone felt the same. Everyone was um, really disappointed in how we performed on that third and fourth playoff. Um, no, and I think it it's still very raw for a lot of the girls, um, especially seeing, you know, you see all the photos on social media of people with medals and then 
a lot of the overseas coming to the hundred and talking about the success is it's really hard to take. But um, yeah, we know there's going to be some changes in in the England setup soon um, with Lisa leaving, and you know that might be a fresh start that um, sparks a bit of fire back in our bellies and, and to go again. We did get we did get to see some you know exciting young players being part of the England setup in in the Commonwealth Games and in the and the games against South Africa as well. Yeah, um, including you. Yeah, <laughs> you're young. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. The, it's an exciting time. You see Alice and Freya come into the environment. Um, you know, I've known Alice Capsu for a long, long time. Um, obviously, she's only eighteen. Person. She's only eighteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But she's been in the Surrey system since she was well tiny um so I've known her and I've worked I've coached her and I've she's been part of my team as well so I've always known that she's got that ability and that she would play for England so for her to be able to go out and show the rest of the world what we all knew she could do um was fantastic and I'm sure she's got a long 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 England career ahead of her and um, yeah, just to have new faces in a team always helps, I think, just to fresh pair of eyes, fresh pair of legs. Um, so her and Freya, you wouldn't think they were 17 and 18. Um, they took it really well. And yeah, they've got two long careers ahead of them. Anyway, drawing to a close, what's your own ambitions now? Is you still hopeful that the Trent Rockets can get to the Eliminators? <laughs> Eliminator? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we've got, what, three games left. Um, hopefully we can get three wins um, and hope some other results go our way. I'm not quite sure what how it all works, but um, we're just focusing on our performance, really, and if the result, other results go our way, they go away. If they don't, they don't. But, um, yeah, three. hopefully three big wins, but um, if we can get through to that eliminator and the final, that would be... Something special. Obviously, didn't get there last year with the fire, so um, it'll be nice to experience experience that. And the England team, you're hoping to get in that squad when they play against India later in the summer. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, it's pretty much straight after the hundred, isn't it? Um, so hopefully, back in that T20 squad and also pushing for an ODI place as well. Um, you know, it's something that I've worked really hard on is my sort of longer format um, and I think I've shown in the Rachel Hayho Flint that I can do that so whether that's you know, playing as a bowler or a batter or whatever um, hopefully get back into that system as well Well it's nice to have two strings to your bow isn't it doesn't <laughs> Yeah it? Thank you very much for, for joining me Bryony on the Paddock and the Pavilion and I also must thank um, Sally Clark um, your operations manager at Lightning Cricket and at the Trent Rockets. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Paddock and the Pavilion. You can download the show on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at The Pad and Pav. Don't forget, if you like the show, please do leave us a rating and review. Sports Social Podcast Network. Looking for a fun way to win 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash play100 and use code play100. That's code play100 at prizepicks.com slash play100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.